Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. This time I'm going to talk about the chi squared distribution. When I'm going to use the chi squared distribution in Excel, I can actually use this for three different approaches. The first one would be if I already have a chi squared statistic and I want to run the chi squared test for this. For example, imagine here I have already actual and expected frequencies. So what I can do here is more or less run the different or calculate the different parts for chi squared. So each block actual minus expected squared divided by expected. Then I'm going to extend this for all four of them and I sum them up, giving me in total my chi squared statistic for those two for this particular data set, so for the relation between those two variables. So if I want to test or want to know what the corresponding significance level to this chi square score is, I can use the Excel function chi and then I already see this as q and this for distribution. So first I have my x, the x, that's my chi squared statistic. Then semicolon, and I have to add the number of degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is more or less how many of the values in this cross table can I select freely? Well, here in a two times two cross table, I can only select one value freely. So if the 23 is set, all the other values are also set. So here, in this case, I only have a degree of freedom of 1. Then, only the last one, do I use a probability density or cumulative density function? Here, in this case, I'm using the probability function. So I put in false. And I get a corresponding significance level of roughly 0.04%. So this is significantly smaller than 5%. So I can reject the H0 hypothesis, which was they do not have anything to do with each other. So this was they are stochastically independent. Therefore, I can assume that the two variables are stochastically dependent. Okay, this is if I already know the chi squared statistic and I know the degrees of freedom. In some cases, usually you start in statistics courses by calculating this and comparing this to some kind of critical value. Well, how would I go about getting these critical values? Well, for this, you can also start with chi squared, but not distribution, but the inverse chi squared distribution. So I and V. And then he asks you for the probability, and that's the critical part here. If you enter a probability of, let's say, 5% here, you will get the wrong value. That's also, if you take a look in the tables, they always list 1 minus alpha. So here I also have to include 1 minus alpha. So if I'm interested in 5%, instead I have to go with 1 minus 5%, so 0 0.95. And finally, again, the degrees of freedom, so my 1. Make press OK. I see my critical value here is for 5%, 3.84 one something. This is clearly smaller than this value. That's why on a 5% significance level, I can reject the H0 hypothesis. So here I get my corresponding significance level. Here I set the significance level and get the corresponding critical value. Okay, that's actually two approaches to this. This is more the statistics program approach. This is more the statistics class approach where you use the tables. What if you're not interested in doing all this stuff down here on your own, but want to have Excel actually do the whole test for you? Well, you still would need the expected frequencies so we could use this for stochastic independence, but we could also use this in different other contexts. So Excel 
only wants to have actual and expected frequencies, how you get the expected, which way you set them. This depends on what you actually want to achieve. Excel doesn't care. He just asks you if you run a she squared and then down here, she squared test. Just ask you about the actual range. That's those four and the expected range. And if you use this version with this times this divided by this, this leads to a random distribution. This leads to a test of stochastic independence. I could also set them as whatever values I would like them to be. Then I more or less have a way to run something comparable to a t-test, but for normal, uh, nominal distributed data. Well, here, just run the normal test of stochastic independence. Actual range, expected range, press OK. And here, I get the corresponding significance level. Okay, this looks a little bit different than this one. So where's actually the difference between those? Let's go to this function. Here, this tells me returns the left tail probability of the chi squared distribution. The test tells me returns the test for independence, the value from the chi for the statistic and the appropriate degrees of freedom. So he does not go into any details here. However, the difference is, if you look closely, that this value is, well, not perfectly twice what this one here is, but close to. And that's that he uses a slightly different approach in getting them. It's more or less like two-tailed, one-tailed distribution. It's not perfectly the way I'm going to talk about this here, but this is more or less how this works in this context. And well, this was then also everything I wanted to say about chi squared distribution, chi squared tests, and well, I hope you enjoyed listening to it. And if you want to see additional content on Axel, feel free to visit the rest of the course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.